from News Channel 8, this is News Talk with Bruce DePoint. Hi and welcome. Great to have you with us today. A new report is adding to the already substantial concern about the impact of sea level rise. Turns out the impact of melting glaciers is, according to some experts, going to be felt much sooner than previously thought. Chris Mooney covers the science and environment beat for the Washington Post. He joins us now from the paper's newsroom downtown. Chris, it's a pleasure to have you here. Good to talk to you. Talk about the new report, the new information that's adding to the already robust conversation the globe, global leaders have been having about the impact of sea level rise. Sure. Well, uh, we originally thought the scientific consensus was that by the end of this century, we could get about a meter at most of rising seas. And that was mainly because glaciers that are on land might melt and the ocean will expand as it warms up. The new research finds that Antarctica, which has the most ice of all, could have a much bigger contribution. And so again, if we emit a lot of greenhouse gases, then you could actually have more, closer to two meters uh, in this century, and then even more after that. We're talking about great peril, potentially, depending on whether you accept the data and the sort of what if, the, the, the tumbling domino theory that many believe is real. This has great peril for coastal communities, large and small. We're hearing about cities like Miami and New Orleans, to say nothing of those around the globe, that would face major, major issues in a relatively short period of time. I mean, 100 years is a long time in terms of your life, my life, the people listening today. But in terms of the preparations and the engineering that would need to be done if all of this plays out, as some think it will, this is, big, this is a big deal. Sure. It's important to emphasize that decisions we make now still affect this because this, this study, which was a computer modeling study that came out in a very prominent journal Nature, says that this depends on us emitting a really high level of greenhouse gases. If we emit less, then they expect seas to rise less. Uh, if we just you know, keep emitting, then not only 2100 could we get twice as much as originally thought, around two meters at the upper end, and there's always a range in these things, but by 2500 it could be a lot more than that. What was it that got the alarm bells clanging more loudly than before? Was it new data? Was it a, a, a measuring capability that was more fine-tuned than what we had seen before? What led to the most recent wave of headlines? Sure. Well, basically scientists, this is the culmination of a long series of studies and better understanding of West Antarctica. West Antarctica is, is the smaller part of the gigantic Antarctic ice sheet, but what it's, what's special about it is that the whole thing is based deep below the ocean surface. So it's a gigantic sheet of ice capable of raising seas more than three meters if it was to melt entirely, all of which is marine, or most of which is marine. So that means that the ocean touches it, the ocean is up against it, and the fear is that the ocean is warming and as it reaches the base of the ice sheet, it gets underneath it and it melts and it melts and it melts. So they take that into account, plus some new processes about what could happen because the ice is very, very thick. And as you go further back and melt it, it gets thicker. And so there are fears that as it gets really high, uh, extending further out of the water, then a, a sort of process of collapse could happen faster. Do experts think that uh, uh, human activity with our machinery and our burning of fossil fuels is the major contributor to this? Is it the normal cycles of, of weather, which have un obviously been taking place since the beginning of time? Is that the primary factor here? Is it a combination? And do we even, can we even say with any real certainty what's causing the, the phenomenon that we're seeing? Uh, sure. Well, the, the study that we're discussing is based on the premise uh, that humans are driving this because what controls the sea level rise in this study is, is how much carbon dioxide there is in the atmosphere, and that is primarily a human-caused phenomenon because we are burning fossil fuels. So that, that I think, is, is kind of the premise here. Now, it is important to note that when you talk about West Antarctica, as we just did, and the fact that warm ocean water is reaching it, scientists are still actually debating precisely what's causing the ocean to send warm waters in towards these glaciers, which appears to be happening. And that's a complicated system with the ocean and the atmosphere interacting, but a lot of scientists do suspect that that too 
is related to greenhouse gases. I was talking with someone just the other day who said, you know, the temperatures have gone up, they've come down, the coast has shifted. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it, uh, and, and that what we know in terms of the data that we can look back on with confidence, uh, again, while it represents a lot in human terms, in terms of the history of the planet, it's, it's the blink of an eye, and we shouldn't get too carried away in the view of this one person uh, with, with what we're seeing at the moment. How do we determine, we as lay people who don't know the science in depth, how do we determine whether uh, what we're seeing is abnormal, unusual, alarming, or whether it's the, the typical, uh, you know, if we had 5,000 or a million years worth of data, uh, it would seem more in the norm. Uh, that's a great question. It's actually also part of this research. So first of all, there's a very strong scientific consensus that what's happening now we are causing. Uh, but the Earth has gone through warm cycles in the past that we didn't cause. We weren't there burning fossil fuels. Uh, we might not have been there at all. However, this research actually looks at past warm periods in order to figure out how the planet worked then and then applies it to the present. So, for instance, a little over 100,000 years ago, scientists know that the oceans were six to nine meters higher uh, than they are right now, and they also know that that was a warm period. And one of the reasons that this new research uh, makes the assertions that it does is because scientists think that the ice it had to come out of Antarctica at that time in order for the ocean to get that high. And it's by, in effect, you know, tuning their simulation uh, to take that information into account that they are able to predict that something similar could happen. Is it, is it uh, likely that cities that are near a coast or that are below sea level will begin making preparations in the next X number of years uh, to prepare for what some believe is the reality that our great-great-grandchildren will face? So, yes, yeah, so seas are already rising. The fear is that they could rise even faster and even more. Some places are already making pretty serious preparations, and then there's a wide, I mean, there's so many coastal cities. Uh, and what really is going to matter is how much and how fast, and this is what this study is trying to get a handle on. If you look at somewhere like New Orleans, they've already got an enormous uh, seawall and series of levees where at least some sea level rise that would be kept out but you look across the country every place is, is different New Orleans has got the most uh, advanced and extremely expensive protection right now I don't know if uh, you're comfortable answering this but I would imagine covering an area full-time as you do that is so fraught with opinions that are all over the map and where emotions tend to run high I can only imagine the sort of pushback you get on a daily basis what your email inbox uh, must look like because uh, there are people who are very alarmed by some of the data they're very concerned about what human activity what they believe human activity is doing to the planet there are others just as passionate that that uh, there's a lot of overreaction taking place and overheated rhetoric and maybe even political agenda at work does this uh, make for interesting work I mean is this a factor for someone like you or sure. and, and all the other people who are in the climate uh, watching uh, uh, community of journalists, uh, just in terms of what day to day is like? Uh, I'm, I'm highly conscious of the fact that this topic is contested and politicized. Uh, my job is nonetheless to make sense out of the science, and in order to do that as a science reporter, what you do is you interview the experts and you weigh how strong uh, their consensus or agreement is, and you try to reflect that in your reporting. In this case, uh, the consensus is very strong that humans are causing global warming to occur. And of course, if you look in the real world, um, we are breaking temperature records. In 2014 was the hottest, no, then it was 2015. And the beginning of 2016, uh, several months at the beginning of this year, are the hottest uh, months in terms of departure from average that have ever been recorded uh, since humans have been recording. So it, it all lines up. There's more uncertainty and there's less consensus, I think, about precisely what's happening with Antarctica. but you know, science is growing there too and researchers are figuring it out and I think it's really important to know. As, as a potentially different issue than sea level rise, in terms of extreme weather, all right. the things we're seeing seemingly here, there and everywhere, do the experts that you talk to draw a link between uh, climate change and extreme weather phenomena occurring more often? Uh, sure they do. You have to go on a case-by-case -case basis in terms of 
what kind of extreme weather you're talking about. So the scientists will most readily and immediately draw a link between climate change and the incidence of heat waves or record-breaking high temperatures. Not surprisingly, if you shift the globe's average temperature up, say, a degree Celsius or degree Fahrenheit, what have you, it means that you will break more hot records than cold records, and of course that has happened. Now, if you then go to other kinds of weather, then the scientists have a sort of different take on each particular thing. If you look at extreme rainfall events, uh, that's also expected to worsen for reasons that have to do with what the warming of the atmosphere and how that affects water vapor. Uh, if you then look at something like hurricanes, it's more contested still, but again, there are reasons to think that they are going to get stronger. There's some evidence that perhaps they already are a little bit. There's certainly been a lot of really record-breaking storms lately, and you just have to go through all the different mm -hmm. kinds of extremes. A very, very interesting time. I'm certain to be doing what you're yeah. doing, and many people, of course, are tracking all of this with great concern. Reporter Chris Mooney tracks environmental news for The Washington Post, joining us from the paper's brand new beautiful newsroom downtown. Thanks for your time today, Chris. We'll talk with you again, I'm sure. Good to talk to you. We'll take a break here. We're back with more news talk after this.